Hi guys, Tony from GME. Today we're going to talk about the different EPIRB models in the GME range. Now whilst a lot of EPIRBs look very similar in their appearance, there are some key differences between the models that you need to be aware of. So we'll start with our MT600 model. So the MT600 is a non-GPS EPIRB, which means that whilst it will still transmit a signal on the 406 MHz frequency, it does not have a GPS receiver in the beacon, which means that the search area and the time taken to pinpoint a location is a little bit longer than a GPS beacon. So when you're looking to purchase an EPIRB, it's really important to take into consideration how quickly the rescue authorities will receive your signal and how accurate the location transmitted will be. So the MT600 is a manually activated beacon. So in the event of an emergency, you must lift the tab and slide the on switch down in order to activate the beacon. Moving on to the next model is the MT600G. This is a GPS equipped EPIRB and whilst it looks very similar to the MT600, it's got the key inclusion of a GPS receiver, which ensures the fastest possible transmission and the most accurate location being transmitted to the rescue authorities in the event of an emergency. The key visual indicator for you to be able to tell the difference between a non-GPS and a GPS MT600 is the inclusion of the GPS antenna on the top of the cap. Just like the MT600, the MT600G is a manually activated beacon. Moving up the range, we have the MT603 series. Now these are very different to the MT600 beacons in that they are water activated. The visual indicator on these beacons is the small C switch on the side of the beacon, which are these two metal contacts. When the beacon is removed from its bracket and makes contact with water, the water completes the circuit on the two metal contacts and will automatically activate the beacon. All MT603 beacons are GPS equipped. So again, you'll notice the inclusion of the GPS antenna on the top of the cap. The MT603G is also available in a float-free configuration, which looks quite different to your standard EPIRB. The float-free configuration refers to the mounting bracket. This bracket here is designed to be mounted on the wall of a vessel. In the event of an emergency and the boat sinking, this EPIRB will automatically release at a depth of between one and four meters through the use of a hydrostatic release unit inside the housing. So if we open the housing up, you'll see an MT603 EPIRB inside, and you'll also see the hydrostatic release unit, or what's known as an HRU. As the water pressure increases as the vessel sinks, the HRU will activate, releasing the cover from the housing and also releasing the EPIRB, which will float to the surface and automatically start transmitting as it's a water activated beacon. We also offer what's known as a conversion kit, which enables you to take your MT603G and convert it into a float free configuration. So the float free conversion kit looks very similar to a float free EPIRB. However, there is no EPIRB inside the housing when it's supplied. What is supplied is the housing itself, the hydrostatic release unit, this black boot and the two mounting screws. The black boot is designed to mount on the bottom of the MT603G beacon to enable it to sit securely in the float free housing. You'll see on the MT603G beacon that there are two slots to enable the boot to mount safely and securely on the bottom of the beacon using the two screws supplied. So it's very important to remember do not install a manually activated beacon into a float free housing because in the event of an emergency, the beacon will not activate automatically and you could find yourself in trouble. So hopefully that's helped clear up some of the confusion for you around the different types of EPIRBs in our range. As always, if you require more information, head to www.gme.net.au, look for the emergency beacon information section where we've got a huge amount of information about the different models in the range, the standards that they adhere to, and also some general care and maintenance tips to ensure that your beacon remains in great condition should you ever have to need it.